You ever think about what is the purpose or meaning of life? Where should your energy and focus go to? What should you be thinking about? What has value and what doesn't? I, like you, also have these questions. And I came up with this thought experiment that can maybe help answer some of your own questions. I'm going to prove to you scientifically that you have lived on three planes of existence, irrefutably. That's right, scientifically and irrefutably. Your first plane of existence was in the context of your father's scrotum. 23 of your chromosomes were content and living in that reality, inside that plane of existence. And in that plane of existence, a little spermie came up to you and said, hey, listen, buddy, one day when the time comes, go for the egg. And you're like, what? What are you talking about? This is the only reality we live in. He's like, listen, trust me. When the time comes, go for the egg. And you're like, sure, sure, whatever. And you carry on with your merry life. And sure enough, one day, a catastrophic, cataclysmic event occurs, and the time comes. And you remember that little sperm, and he said, go for the egg. And so you go for the egg. You realize that your tail had served a greater purpose than you initially thought. And you fly through that acidic environment as hard and as fast as you possibly can, and you achieve the egg. You arrive at the egg, and you circumambulate and you circumnavigate this egg, and for some mystical, mysterious reason, you are selected. The attributes that you've developed, unknown, and you are absorbed now by this egg, and you transform, you transmute, you become the zygote, the embryo, the fetus, and in this second plane of existence now, you are developing attributes that outwardly serve no purpose. For example, what purpose does the sense of sight have in the context of the womb? What purpose does the sense of taste? What purpose do your hands, your feet, your fingernails have in the context of the womb? None. These attributes are being developed for the plane of existence to come. And the attributes and the faculties that you were developing inside the womb outwardly are invisible to you. You literally can't see them. You have a sense of these things, but they are beyond your ken of comprehension. And so now in the second plane of existence, yet another catastrophic, cataclysmic event occurs. And despite the fact that you were content in your mother's womb, you are thrust into your third plane of existence. And on this plane of existence, once again, you transform, you transmute, you become from the infant to the toddler, to the adolescent, to the young adult, to the elderly. Now the question is, during this transformation, during this growth, what attributes are invisible to you? What attributes are you developing that outwardly serve no purpose, but are for the world to come? Now that's a big thought. Now it seems that our world is oriented around materialism, bricks, houses, office buildings, cars, are we on a material plane of existence? Are you in the womb developing material attributes? I see that through the process and progress of our existence, we, on this plane of existence, I see through the progress and process of our evolution on earth, through childhood to adult to elderly states, we are developing the invisible attributes of love, of compassion, of empathy, these things that we call spiritual attributes are invisible to the ken and, and scope of our eyes, but they continue to evolve. And we often attribute a sense of light. That person shines light. This person shines light. That person is full of light. We attribute a sense of light to the attributes that are invisible. Love, compassion, empathy. You ever notice that as you approach the people that have lived their lives, if they are filled with more love and compassion and empathy, they are more beautiful. But when they're focused on the material existence, they're less beautiful. Perhaps we are on this plane of existence to develop attributes that outwardly serve no purpose. Now, there's a question I like to ask when confronted with these facts the facts of a spiritual existence over a material existence. 
And I say to you, if you have a loved one or a child, I say to you to ask yourself, if I am presented with the option of a loved one or a home or an office building or a house, what do I choose? And immediately your mind knows the right answer. Your soul knows the right answer. And it's always the loved one or the child. It doesn't matter the size of the office building that I offer you or the house that I offer you. And the decision was made based on an invisible attribute, an invisible faculty that can't be measured. But you just know, and that is love. So I propose to you that perhaps there's more that we can think about. Perhaps we are on this plane of existence to develop our spiritual faculties. And if you're a person of science like I am, you might want to plot the points of this growth on a chart. So you started here in your father's scrotum, and then you went here to the womb, and then you went here to earth. So if you extrapolate this tangent, you'll see that it doesn't end, that it clearly moves forward up the line. Something to think about. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alejo Mosam.